In this lecture, you will learn about one of the tools that I use to track my food intake. It is called Chronometer and it is a web-based application with a lot of user-friendly features for live logging purposes. You can not only use it to track your food, but also to track your exercise routines, though for that purpose I use another tool. You can use it to enter notes, to track water, coffee and alcohol intake, to track your weight, and it has many other features. There is also the smartphone app version of Chronometer, which is available for both iPhone and Android users. I have the Android version, but I mostly use the web version. The link for this application is in the transcript. Now, here's how you can use it. In rectangle number one, which I highlighted in red, you have the option to add food. When you click on that, you will be given a list of thousands of foods and products that you can add. When you click on one particular food item, it will give you a short description of its caloric and macronutrient content. You will be able to add the serving size there. All simple foods are found in the table. Most packaged foods are also found here. Now, if there is a packaged food that you consume and you cannot find it in the list, you can simply add it permanently to the list. To do this, close the Add Food menu and go to the upper part of the website where it says Food and use the option to Create New Food. To enter the caloric content and macros for your new food, please look at the labels of that food. But in most cases, you will not have to do that. The database of this app is very inclusive. You can see the entries that I made for this example. Now, in the red rectangle number 2, you have the option to add your workouts. Like in the example with food, if there is an activity you cannot find in the list, you can simply use the custom section to add it. To know how many calories your custom exercise will burn in a specific amount of time, you can simply do a web search. You can see that for this example I created a custom exercise entry called Gym, where I burn approximately 400 calories for my 60 minutes section. I, I do not necessarily have to burn all those calories in 60 minutes. Heavy lifting workouts may increase your metabolism for up to 48 hours after completion. So I may be burning more than 400 calories as a result of my workout. Moving on to the red rectangle number three. You have the option to add biometric measurements. You can track your height, weight, blood glucose levels, body fat, waist size, total cholesterol, low density lipoprotein cholesterol, that is LDLC, HDL, and even ketones. I only use this feature to track my weight though, but the availability of options makes it so convenient. Moving on to the red rectangle number four. Here you have the option to add notes to your daily log. I recommend using this feature. It helps you really quantify your life and it's very useful and insightful when you revisit your notes at a future time. I personally use this section to track my supplements intake, but supplements can also be added through the add food option. It may be better to track your supplements with the add food option, because this way you include them in your macronutrient and micronutrient analysis for that specific day. But for me, I simply got used to adding my supplements as notes. The fifth red rectangle is one of the settings button. I mostly use this to copy entire days of logs. It's convenient for me to do so because there are many days when I eat basically the same foods and I have the same entries, so I would not have to add them manually. It saves me time. 
I have to tell you that I do not track my intake of water, coffee, alcohol and other beverages. I just add a note entry whenever I consume something different than water. For example, when I consume two glasses of red wine. I just add a note entry of two glasses of wine at night, six hours post meal. I could also add this through the add foods option. But once again, I got used to adding it as note. Right below your entry list, you have a summary of your calories and macros. You can set daily targets, that is goals, for each of these groups. Before, below that, you have a more in-depth analysis of the macronutrients, vitamins and minerals you consumed with your food. Clicking on a specific food entry in your list will give you the in-depth analysis of that food. The calendar on the right and also the weight change. Progression chart right below are two important features to consider. This web or smartphone application has much more attached to it that I can describe here. I also pointed out to you some of its most basic features and all of them are available with the free version. Like I've said, there is also the paid version which gives you some more options and features. The major advantage to the paid version is that it gives you access to the full history of your entries with which you can do many types of data analyses. I believe the price for the paid version is approximately $5 per month. Anyway, you will do just fine with the free version only. And I'll let you reserve the privilege of discovering the rest of the features of this app for yourself. Another very similar application, if you don't want to use Chronometer, is MyFitnessPal. You have the link to this application in the transcript. Many people use MyFitnessPal. It's probably the most popular food tracking application. Chronometer is not as popular, but I got used to it, which is why I'm describing it here. Now, in our next lecture, I will review the three most used methods for tracking ketone levels.